Hey there, CPO here, and in this video, I'm going to go over some of the differences between the Sunto Core All Black and the Casio ProTrek PRW 3001A watches. It's not going to go into every single feature or difference. These are just the things sort of off the top of my head that I noticed as I was comparing two watches, so I thought I would share this with you. So let's get to it. First, the backlight. Now, the uh, Sunto has a backlight button, and uh, when you press it, the light will stay on as long as you're pressing buttons. You can do whatever you want to do, and it seems like every button press sort of resets the backlight. Now, this is different than the menu setting to have all buttons activate the backlight. This is just standard single button backlight activate, which is nice because when you're navigating at night, as long as the backlight is active, it will stay active no matter what you're doing. The Casio, on the other hand, when you engage the backlight, anytime you press a button to change modes, the backlight goes off. And then you've got to press the backlight, change. It just, it seems like doing something in the dark is impossible because the backlight keeps going out on me. Now, with that said, the Casio's backlight is much brighter than the Suntos, although I kind of prefer the dimmer backlight. Uh, it's not quite so blinding in the middle of the night when I want to check the time. Uh, but anyway... So there you go. The backlight is more annoying to me on the Casio than the Sunto. All right, the countdown timer. Turns out the Sunto will allow you to set seconds as part of your timer setting. And uh, as I'll show you on the Casio, uh, it does not. But, you know, I make coffee in the morning. I let it steep for one minute and 30 seconds. I usually use the microwave for this, but sometimes I leave the room and forget, and then I can't hear the microwave, and I come back, and, you know, it's too late. But So it's just nice to be able to set a timer for one minute, 30 seconds. The Casio, on the other hand, you are stuck with whole minutes only. Uh, now, there is a, another side of this, which is the Casio will allow you to set uh, up to 24 hours uh, timer, whereas uh, on the Sunto, you're limited just to, I believe it's 99 minutes, so uh, maybe it's 90 minutes. I don't remember now, but at any rate, uh, you, there's some limitations on both sides. Uh, the issue for me, though, is I would rather have the ability to adjust seconds than the ability to have an extended length of time for the countdown. Next, navigation. So for the Sunto, I actually don't like the navigation as much uh, as the Casio, but there's one button that cycles through time, altimeter, barometer, and then compass. And if you want to switch between the altimeter and the barometer, that's a profile change you have to make in the main menu. And the reason is it has altimeter lock, and there's a lot of great reasons why this makes sense to lock it into one profile. But it just means it's not as easy to switch between the two profiles. Um, but like I said, I think it makes more sense to have the profiles the way they are. What I wish that the Sunto had was a way to just jump right back from the to the time uh, without having to cycle through uh, the compass and then back to the time. I hate to turn on the compass any more than I have to. Whereas on the Casio, there's a dedicated altimeter, a dedicated barometer, a dedicated compass button. Uh, that allows you to jump to those instantly. And then if you hit the mode button, you will jump right back to the time. You don't have to cycle through anything. Here's another little feature that you may not know about. If you're anywhere in the time modes, if you hold down the, the mode button, it will jump back to the main time screen. So anyway, I kind of like it better on the Casio. Oh, one more thing while we're talking about navigation. The Casio has this sort of centralized uh, menu system uh, for settings, sort of like um, how the iPhone uh, maintains everything centrally. Whereas with the Casio, uh, depending on which mode you're in, there's a separate menu within that mode. So uh, think of it as centrally uh, managed settings and units and all of that on the, uh, the Sunto. And then each uh, function has its own separate menu on the Casio. The other thing is the buttons are backwards on the Casio. I don't get that. Why would the top button be down and the bottom button be up? It just doesn't even make sense to me. The Sunto is the way you would expect it to be. The Casio seems backwards to me. All right, barometric trend. 
So there's this little trending display up at the top of the Sunto that you can see what the last six hours of trending are. But you can also look at the last 24 hours of trending on a nice little graph. In addition to that, you can go into the altimeter barometer uh, memory and you can view in 30 minute increments what the barometer settings were or the altimeter, depending on which profile you had at the time, was at that particular time spot. So you can scroll back through time and look at how things have changed. With the Casio, on the other hand, you have this display up at the top, which gives you 48 hours of data, but that's all you get to see. That's it. You have that graph uh, for historical reference and nothing else. Now, the altimeter log, both uh, watches have the ability to do trek logging or, or uh, altimeter logging, which is great. Uh, once you develop a log, you can view it in the Sunto in the logbook, and it's got some cool things. You can view the log, you can lock it, but you can also replay it. So if you, uh, if you want, you can replay uh, and fast forward even your... Uh, your trek, which is kind of nice if you just want to kind of revisit your altitude for a given uh, trek. And then you can slow that down and speed it up and view uh, specific time time spots. Uh, and it also will log split uh, and lap uh, times, etc. But I think that's really cool. And you've also got the text data like your peak and, and low spots and all that. But on the Casio, you're pretty much limited to just uh, the bare basics, your total, your descent, your ascents, uh, that kind of stuff. But you don't get a really nice graphic display, and you can't replay anything. But it covers the basics, to be fair. All right, the compass. They both have really great compasses, uh, but the bearing lock you know or the navigation lock or whatever you want to call it uh i think is a lot cooler on this on the sunto you can see here how i've locked in a bearing and it will give me directions turn right or turn left and a nice arrow pointing which way i need to go to uh to get to the right bearing the casio also has a feature like that it's just a little more subtle you have a little dot that you use to navigate to your bearing and then a triple dot which helps you maintain where your north is it's just, you know, it works. So I had to point it out because the Sunto does kind of go the extra mile uh, with regard to navigation in that regard. Dual time display. Now, I do like to have the ability to display GMT time, UDT, Zulu, whatever you want to call it, uh, on my watch at the same time as my regular uh, local time. So on the Sunto, down at the bottom display, you can have an alternative time zone with your primary display up top. And then you set that in the settings uh, menu, and there's not much you can do to, to change it accidentally. On the Casio, there is a time function that will be for world time, and uh, you can set that. The problem is, if you want to view world time, those buttons, the, the compass and altimeter button, are actually uh, what you use to change the time zone, and they're always active. So if you bump one of those buttons, you've changed the time zone. Uh, you know... Th a little risky there, and I know a lot of people have complained about that. What I do like about the Casio in this regard is you have the ability to have the second time zone primary and the local time zone secondary. On the Sunto, uh, you only have local time zone as primary. Which brings me to the button lock. Because on the Sunto, you can hold down the lower right button and actually lock all of the buttons. Now, the display change at the bottom, the bottom left button, uh, will still work, but nothing else uh, will uh, will change. And you just don't have that feature in the Casio, which means lots of opportunities for accidental button presses. Um, I don't know. It is what it is. The stopwatch. So on the Sunto, uh, it's got a very basic stopwatch. You've got start, stop, and then reset. And that's pretty much it. There's no split timing here. Uh, it's, it's as basic as a stopwatch can get. The Casio, on the other hand, has a little bit more robust stopwatch, and it has split timing. So you can do uh, laps and, uh, and break out uh, those with the, the stopwatch. 
Now, there is a tricky way to do this with the Sunto using the logging feature, uh, and I've showed that in a previous video, so we won't go into it here. The thermometer. So the thermometer reading on both of these watches is pretty accurate, but I will note that the Casio has the ability to uh, calibrate the thermometer. You can uh, adjust it based on known conditions, whereas the Sunto, you're kind of stuck with whatever you have uh, you know, in the watch. So bonus to Casio for allowing you to calibrate, which I have done with this particular watch. Sunrise and Sunset. So both display sunrise and sunset. Uh, Sunto has it here as a bottom display just for that one day. The Casio, however, has a separate function for sunrise and sunset, and you can navigate through the clock. You can see what the sunrise and sunset is going to be tomorrow or next week or today. So that's a cool feature, which is kind of nice. Plus, you have the ability to set it a little bit more locally with lat launch. All right, the alarms. The Sunto uh, has... A a simple alarm. It is one alarm, but it has a really cool snooze feature, which I like a lot and I have become very accustomed to. So when the alarm goes off, you get the opportunity to say snooze, yes, or snooze, no. If you say no, you won't hear from the alarm again. If you say yes, you'll hear from it again. What is it, five or ten minutes? I don't remember. The Casio, however, is a little bit different. You have several alarms, but only one specific alarm has the snooze feature. All the others are just standard alarms. So you can set your snooze alarm, and then, uh, but then you have to turn that off. And it's not quite as, as simple as it is, uh, you know, and, you know, use a snooze alarm to wake up, uh, to be real. So if I want to hit the snooze and turn it off or whatever, um, I don't want to have to go in and play around with menu options to turn off the alarm. But that's how it works with the Casio. So you press the button. Snooze is still active, so it's going to go off uh, again here pretty soon unless you actually go in. There are several different ways to do this, but one of them is to go in to the uh, snooze alarm menu and just turn it off. Seems like a lot of work to get rid of a, a snooze alarm. The bezel. This will be short and sweet. Uh, quite simply, the Sunto has a bi-directional rotating bezel, and the Casio does not. Fixed bezel. I don't know what I'd use a bezel for in a watch with a digital compass, but we'll see. Now, the rest of it, the whole package, right? The uh, Sunto is only three grams heavier than the Casio. They're very similar in weight, but the Casio actually feels heavier on my wrist, probably because the weight is more concentrated. Uh, very similar. The Sunto is clearly bigger, but it doesn't wear bigger. It doesn't feel bigger. They both have the nice aluminum checkered uh, buttons, very positive feeling. Um, the band on the Casio is narrower and stiffer than the Sunto. I prefer the soft Sunto band. And then the buckles are both um, black anodized, uh, which is cool. But um, they're both great watches, and they both have a lot to offer. In the end, I chose the Sunto Core All Black as my primary watch. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.